Okay, good morning, everyone. <laughs> so thank you first for uh, all the love <laughs> with the flowers and the cards. I appreciate it. When I uh, had lunch with Dr. Yong yesterday, um, he suddenly invited me for lunch uh, in the morning. And uh, yeah, it was really enjoyable. And it just so happened, again, I didn't plan this, but it just so happened that um, that day, that morning, was the hundredth time that I, I was reading the EDP one hour. So uh, usually I, I read one third of the book um, each day. That was kind of my thing, 12 minutes every day. But I figure because it's a special day and I was going to meet Dr. Young, might as well get it done. So I read through it that morning and then I kind of gave it kind of as an offering to him. But he was so happy. And he started taking pictures of it. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, so thank you for all your love. Um, in the theme of the culture of love, uh, as you know, we've been doing this Four Realms of Heart series. And uh, last week, we started with the children's realm of heart. Um, but I want to share that, you know, these Four Realms of Heart, this is actually part of our mission statement here at the New Jersey Family Church. So it's not by chance that we're talking about this. The whole point or focus of our community is to really create a thriving community by helping every person experience and grow these four realms of heart. So please pay attention because these next four sermons are kind of the essence of what we do here in our family church. So last week we started with the children's realm of heart and... You know, Dr. Young also made a comment at, after my sermon. The essence of the children's realm of heart is actually this hyojong heart. It's a Korean term, which means filial heart. And this is so important. The children's realm, all, the essence of it is that we're doing everything out of this uh, heart of wanting to make my parents happy, wanting to make God happy. Of course, we might have to start with a, a level of duty. That's the first level, right? Ah, I got to do this because I have to. But then you want to grow to a point where you're doing it because you, you actually enjoy it. You feel joy from it. But the highest level of developing this filial heart is because you want to make your parents happy. Even beyond just your own joy, you want to do it because you want to make your parents or God happy. So that was last week, and this week we're going to go into the siblings' realm of heart. So this is the second of four realms of heart, and this is just as important as the first one. So let's, let's take a deeper look, starting with the definition. So uh, siblings, children of the same parent or parents. Simple enough, that's what it means to be siblings, and heart... Uh, as I mentioned yes, last week, the impulse to seek joy through giving and receiving true love. So the sibling's realm of heart is simply this impulse to seek joy through giving true and receiving true love among brothers and sisters, among siblings. Now here in our community, we see God as our heavenly parent. And that's what actually makes us siblings. Even beyond race, nationality, culture, we consider one family under God because we see God as a common parent to humanity. And so this siblings realm of heart is what allows us to relate with other people as family members. So uh, this is gonna be the key to really creating this culture of family in the world. So I want to start with going into the depth, the essence of siblings' realm of heart. This one uh, is really key. So I want to start with this question. Is this realm of heart primarily vertical or horizontal? Uh, vertical meaning like uh, relationship. I guess, how do I explain that? Anyway, you know, vertical and horizontal, right? So the idea is, what, what would you say? Siblings realm of heart, the children's realm of heart is definitely vertical in nature. It's this kind of attendance, 
between you and God, you and your parents. How about the sibling's realm of heart? Would you say it's primarily vertical or horizontal? What do you think? I heard horizontal. So someone said both. Okay. Well, let's take a deeper look. Anyone can read this? It's in Chinese or Chinese characters, but Hyonje Chame. In Korean, it's Hyonje Chame. How about in Japanese? Kyodai Shimai. Okay. Very good. So, if you look at these characters, this is what it, siblings is in Asia, right? Uh, it's actually elder brother, younger brother, elder sister, younger sister. So I want to challenge this concept of siblings realm being a horizontal relationship. Actually, I want to say that the primary essence of even siblings realm is vertical in nature. Because it's through your love of your parents, you're learning to care for your younger siblings, you're learning to respect your elders, and so even the foundation of the relationship of siblings starts with this vertical nature. Think about it, why would you take care of your siblings? They're annoying, right? Why would you do that? It's because you're, you, you see what the parents see in them. You know what the parents want for them. And from that perspective, you try to care for them. And so, of course, there is a horizontal nature to the siblings realm, and I'm gonna go into that as well. But I believe that the primary essence of siblings love is also, uh, actually stems from this vertical relationship. So let's look into it more deeply. Uh, this is a quote from uh, Mother Moon. It says, it is easy for siblings to quarrel among themselves when their parents are not present. Any, any parents experience that? Yeah, they fight when you're not there, right? Actually, I remember parents saying like, uh, when they're making a lot of noise and fighting, that's normal. But when they're quiet, then you know they're up to something. So that's when you have to be careful. Uh, the reason such struggles continue is because children do not always understand their parents' intentions. We can understand our parents' intentions only when we create a bond of heart with them in true love. So, you know, here Mother Moon is saying that in order for siblings to get along, it requires the siblings to understand the parents' heart in order for them to get on. Okay, just let me share one story. So I remember growing up, I used to get really annoyed at my dad because every time I talked to my dad, he would keep pointing out how good my brothers were. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, how come you always talk about my brothers? Like, how about me? That's how I was feeling, right? Oh, so annoying. And then, one time, my brother came up to me, and my brother said, man, Papa always talks about you. <laughs> and then it dawned on me that my dad was always pointing out the good points in my siblings to each of the children to help us understand the value and merit of each of our brothers and sisters. So that's kind of the parental role, is to help each child understand the, the value of each of their siblings. So why is this realm so important? Well, let's go to the Bible. It says John in John chapter 4, 21. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. So this is the second of the greatest commandments. The first is to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And the second is just as great, love your neighbor as thyself. So in one sense, this um, sibling's realm is part of God's commandment to each of us, to love thy neighbor, right? So this is something that we definitely uh, want to practice because it is 
uh, biblically based and what God intends for us. I want to give you two more reasons why this realm is so important. You know, the children's realm is where you first kind of really learn to appreciate the love that you are receiving from your parents and God. Um, that's how, how you do that is through gratitude. But the siblings realm is where you can take that love and practice sharing it with others. So that's why it's so important because it's not just about receiving God's love, but learning how to share it. You know, as parents, when our kids are really young, we always tell them, you know, how they have to learn to share. Uh, I don't know if anyone's a, a for elder, the first child in their family, anyone, right? Usually they're the most responsible, right? Why is that? Is because they had to actually care for their younger siblings. And they went through the same struggle when, when the second child was born. All of a sudden, they don't have full attention from their parents, right? Now mommy is always with the new baby and you feel so much lack of love, actually. But you grow through it, you learn from it, and you realize, yeah, I need to also learn to care for my younger siblings. That's how they learn this sibling's realm of heart, through observing how the parent loves and cares for their siblings. So sibling's realm, I would say the second main reason is really you want to learn to practice loving others based on the love that you've learned and received. But the other point I want to say is preparation for the next realm. And we're going to cover this more next week. But the sibling's realm of heart is the best practice or preparation for loving your spouse. Okay, what do I mean by that? Uh, one quick story, I used to be in my missions, missionary training program. It was called Special Task Force back in the day. And, you know, I, I was a very peaceful kind of good nature. Got along with everybody, generally, right? But then they put us in a van together. Uh -oh, that sounds bad. But anyway, we, we went fundraising. Uh, and we would travel in vans, you know, selling, raising funds through selling trinkets. And when you spend so much time together, you really get annoyed with each other. And I remember we would be at each other's throats. Like, we would really, like, hate each other because you get annoyed at each other. And then one day, the captain or the team leader, he was like, you know, you need to learn how to get along. Because who knows, one of them might become your future wife <laughs> or husband. And we're like, no way. <laughs> um, but the point was that we needed to practice learning to love every kind of different characteristics. And Father Moon used to say that in order to really become a true um, person, you need to learn to love 12 different types of personalities, right? And this is actually the practice of this sibling's realm of heart. How can you learn to love all these kinds of different people? Why are you doing that? It's so that you can love your spouse fully. So this is all practice, guys. It's so that you can really love your spouse fully by practicing loving any kind of person. So to recap, uh, why grow your siblings realm of heart? Three main points. First is that's what God wants for all of us. It's a chance to practice uh, sharing God's love. And it is preparation for loving your spouse. So now that we know why it's important, what it is, next is how. How do we practice this siblings realm of heart? This is one of my favorite passages from Father Moon. He goes into detail about what this sibling's realm of heart is. It's, it's poetic. I'm telling you. Let's read together. I, I mean, I'll read, but you can read along. The younger siblings practice true love by respecting and serving their older brothers and sisters just as they would serve and support their father or mother. 
So again, Father Moon is saying here that that's how younger, younger siblings learn is by serving their elders as they would their parents. The older brother looks after and lives for the sake of his younger siblings in the same way that the parents love their children. Again, the elder sibling learns by observing their parents, oh, I need to also care for my siblings as well. And sometimes the elder siblings are able to love their other siblings in a way that the parents can't. Uh, one example I remember growing up was, uh, we grew up pretty poor. <laughs> And so we didn't have, on Independence Day, all our friends would do firecrackers and stuff, but we didn't have fire, we couldn't afford to even get firecrackers ourselves. But my older brother, he was very um, uh, ingenious. What he did was he would buy a pack. He would go to Chinatown. We lived in Queens, New York. So he would actually go to Chinatown, buy these firecrackers in bulk would sell them one by one to his friends, make back all the money, and keep the rest for us to enjoy on Independence Day. And so even though we didn't have money, he would find a way to get uh, enough firecrackers so that on Independence Day, we could actually enjoy uh, lighting firecrackers ourselves. Uh, and that was really beautiful, um, that kind of heart to want to experience that joy that we were longing for he took the initiative to do that. And also, I remember on Super Bowl Sunday, you know, all of our friends are talking about it and so on and so forth. And so my older brother, he would actually go to the store, get a whole bunch of snacks, and he would sit us all down in front of the TV, and we would actually enjoy our own Super Bowl party um, because uh, he wanted us to experience that kind of joy that our friends were experiencing as well. So this kind of heart that the elder sibling has, it's really looking after the younger siblings in the same way that the parents, or even when the parents can't give that love, they step in and provide that. That's what elder sibling love is like. Let's continue. This is the perfection of sibling love. Each sibling nurtures the strengths and compensates for the weaknesses of the others. This realm of heart among brothers and sisters sharing the same blood is a love that no one can divide. Oh, I love this. It's so poetic. There's two key points here. So each sibling nurtures the strengths of the others and compensates for their weaknesses. Now, normally, in siblings' relationship, we tend to do the opposite. We kind of put down each other's strengths, and we point out their weaknesses. Anyone experience that? Right? <laughs> right? When someone comes home and is like, oh, yeah, I got 100 on my math test, and they're bragging, and you're like, at least I have friends. <laughs> right? And then... You know, another sibling comes home with all their friends and says, yeah, I just came back from a great party. Everyone loves me. It's like, at least I'm not dumb. You know, it's like we tend to really focus on each other's weaknesses. But imagine if we were to practice the principal sibling realm, which is to really acknowledge each, each person's strengths and compensate. We know everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. But true sibling love is about honoring people's unique strengths. And you know, if they're weak in some area, we cover for them. That's the kind of culture we want to create. So what would life, society, and the world be like if we practice true siblings' love? This is another verse that I love from Father Moon. Children living in a true family who perfect the brother and sister's realm of heart in the true love of God, will go on into the world to lead lives as clear as crystal and as bright as a shining sun. When they meet people older than themselves, they will honor and serve them with the same heart that they would exhibit towards their own parents. They will show the same true love towards younger people that they would toward their younger siblings, sharing with them and helping them as a result, everyone will love them. 
They will be respected as owners of true love and heart. Though they may be young, they will become central persons trusted and relied upon by people of all ages. I love this passage because what Father Moon is saying here is that if you practice true siblings' love, you will be successful in anything you do. Think about it. If you respect even at your work, you respect your boss as you do your parents, you also care for your colleagues as you would your younger siblings, who wouldn't want to promote you, right? Who wouldn't want to spend time with you, be with you, wish for your success? If you practice true siblings, Ramalov, you will be successful in all your relationships. That's what Father Moon is saying here. And so it's such a powerful concept that if we practice this true realm of heart, we can really win the hearts of all those around us and bring joy to them and bring joy to God. So in summary, how to grow your siblings' realm of heart. First, practice respecting your elders as you would your parents. Care for your youngers as your parents would. And finally, nurture the strengths and compensate your weaknesses, their weaknesses. Now, you might think, well, what if I don't respect my parents? Well, go back to children's realm of heart. You need a foundation in the children's realm of heart in order to really be successful in the siblings' realm. So if you have trouble respecting your parents or respecting God or feeling the love from the parents, then you need to work on the children's realm, which is all about your ability to practice gratitude and receive the love that is already being given. Now, no parent is perfect. They're not able to give full love to you. But as a child, your responsibility is learn to receive the limited love that is coming to you from your parents and still appreciate it. And even deeper is God's love is always there, but it's your responsibility to learn how to appreciate and receive that love that God has already given you. That's the essence of children's realm of heart. And that is necessary for you to be able to love others in the siblings realm. Because if you don't feel love, how are you supposed to give love to other people? So it's it's really important that we develop each of these realms. First, the children's realm on that foundation, the siblings realm. You know, as leaders, or in my ministry, I have to do this all the time. You know, for example, you know, Takino-san would come to me. Ah, Nancy, she has many ideas, but... I struggle sometimes because she never does those ideas. I say, Takino-san, don't worry, Nancy. She has a beautiful heart and she really cares for people. And that's so valuable for our community. I see, I see. But then Nancy comes to me and says, Ah, Pastor Naokimi, I'm struggling so much with Takino-san. He's... He's always doing stuff, and he doesn't really concern about people's hearts. He always just keeps, keeps telling people what to do. Ah, Nancy, you know, Takino, he, he's such a hard worker. He just wants to fulfill Dr. Young's desire, and I can really rely that no matter what, he's going to get things done. And so she's like, oh, yeah, I understand now. So as a leader, you always have to be able to see the strengths of each person and really nurture those strengths, acknowledge those strengths, and help the other team members see the value and compensate for each other. You know, maybe I encourage Nancy, yeah, yeah, please encourage Takino-san to express more heart, or I encourage Takino-san, please encourage Nancy to just uh, support her in following up to make sure those ideas are completed. So that way, we can really create a beautiful atmosphere, even though everyone has their different strengths and weaknesses. So here at New Jersey Family Church, we have different programs that help you. Uh, First, for the youth, we have GO. 
So one way to practice siblings realm of heart is just to participate in all of our youth activities. You may be a single child or you may not have so much time to spend with your siblings. Well, come to youth ministry and there's a whole bunch of siblings or peers you can practice on. Or in CARP, we have a CARP Collegiate Center and this is a great way. It's kind of like learning to live with each other without killing each other, you know? Um, that's, that's CARP. Well, CARP has a better vision than that, but anyway, that's one of the, the perks. And to expand CARP, we have now a Life of Faith Training Center, as I mentioned before, led by Jake Lavinia. Yes, thank you. Um, anyway, if you want a taste of this and you're single, uh, you can always sign up for a seven-day or a 21-day experience where you can go to the center and practice this sibling's realm of heart. Learn what it takes to get to know each other and live with each other and learn to love all kinds of different personalities. So we have that available. And for those who want to go even more extreme, like a shortcut intensive, we have GPA, Generation Peace Academy. This is where you go on a one-year mission where you really learn to deal with all kinds of people. That's kind of like what I experienced where you're living together with a whole bunch of people from different parts of the country and even world, and it's a great place to grow your heart. And finally, I want to encourage, as uh, Pastor Nancy mentioned, you know, if you feel like you want to serve our community more directly, I want to invite you to, you know, volunteer as a ministry leader. When you take some kind of leadership, you have to practice this sibling's realm of heart. You need to learn how to deal with different kinds of people and make peace and organize and appreciate and raise up. So for your own development, I want to encourage you. And it doesn't have to be with our church uh, or our ministry only, right? If you, team sports is another great way. Or maybe in your school, participate or, or serve in your, in your job more. Point is, be intentional about growing this realm of heart. So in summary, the essence of the sibling's realm of heart is learning to love your peers from parents' perspective. Second, growing this heart will not only make God happy, it will make you successful in all relationships. Third, you can practice this realm through one, offering respect and serving others, or also caring for youngers and being a team player, as I mentioned, nurturing strengths, compensating weaknesses. And finally, this will bring peace in your family, society, and the world. So the siblings realm is really crucial in creating peace in wherever you go. The reflection question for today is, how can I grow my siblings realm of heart this week? The challenge is to express appreciation to and or serve three peers, siblings or friends, sometime this week. And next week is going to be on the conjugal realm. This is the most juicy realm of heart. So don't miss it. Next week, we're going to go deep into the conjugal realm of heart. And... In conclusion, you know, these four realms of heart are really the essence, I believe, of a peaceful world, which is the purpose that we have as a community. And it starts in the family. You know, uh, Dr. Young always emphasizes that the real front line is the family, right? Because it might be easy to be nice to your friends, but try being nice to your sibling, right? We need to practice this constantly in our most closest relationships. And by growing and overcoming that, the extension of that becomes a peaceful society, nation, and ultimately world. So thank you guys for joining. I hope you learned something today and I hope you can practice it this week. May God bless you and your family.